We're continuing our study of looking at Catholic answers to questions and comparing them to what the Scripture says. This is question 14. Are the seven deadly sins in the Bible? Are the seven deadly sins in the Bible? This comes from the New Catholic Answer Bible. The New Catholic Answer Bible is authorized by the Board of Trustees of the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine and approved by the Administrative Committee slash Board of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops and the United States Catholic Conference. So this is official Catholic doctrine answer to the question, are the seven deadly sins in the Bible? It reads, Though people often speak of the seven deadly sins, the more accurate description is seven capital vices. A vice is not the same thing as a sin. Rather, it is a habit that inclines us to sin. Usually, a vice is the result of repeated sinful actions of a particular kind, so that a truly vicious cycle appears. Sins lead to a habit, which in turn leads to more sins. The word capital comes from the Latin term for head. A capital vice is thus head or chief among other vices in the sense that it leads to others. Though scripture contains no explicit reference to seven particular vices as capital, we find numerous biblical warnings against these seven. Pride, envy, sloth, lust, greed, gluttony, and anger. The wisdom books especially address them repeatedly. Pride, the reservoir of sin, which is by an apocrypha book, not scripture, is the habit of thinking of ourselves and our qualities more highly than we truly merit. Envy is a sense of pain or misery indulged in when we see someone else prosper. Uh, that's another reference to another apocryphal book. Sloth is a kind of spiritual laziness that, laziness that makes us reluctant to do good because it might cost us something. See Proverbs 12, 24. Lust is the inordinate desire for sexual pleasure that inclines us to see others as objects for our personal gratification. See Proverbs 6, 25 through 29. Greed or covetousness is an immoderate desire for material goods or worldly honors. See Psalm 119, 36. Gluttony is the excessive desire for or use of food and drink. See Proverbs 23, 21. Anger or wrath in this context refers to the tendency to become angry excessively or without just cause. See Psalm 37, 8. The best way to cure a vice is to build the opposite habit through practice. This good habit is called a virtue. Okay, pretty much they said absolutely nothing in this. Are the seven deadly sins in the Bible? Okay, they've defined seven that are deadly. They even admit that, and they even said this themselves, Scripture contains no explicit reference to seven particular vices as capital. Um, I would assume what they're saying is that they believe that these seven sins are the ones that would cause you to uh, have eternal separation from God. They're deadly in the sense that they kill you spiritually. Would think is what they're talking about. It seems to be what they're indicating. Um, which by implication means that any other sins you could do and you wouldn't lose, you wouldn't have eternal separation from God. Um, any other sins, you'd only go to purgatory and you'd pay for them. But if you do these seven deadly ones, then you're going to the lake of fire. There's no way around it. I guess that's what they're saying. They don't have any scriptural support for them. The fact that seven are mentioned in scripture, okay, that's well and good. It doesn't tell you they're deadly. It doesn't tell you they're going to give you eternal damnation. What we should do is look at James 2. James 2. And verse 10, James 2, 10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So what the Bible says when it comes to sin, um, in fact, so keep that in mind. Let's look over in Romans 6, 23. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, now let's look at Romans 3. Romans 3, 9. Romans 3, 9. What then? Are we better than they? No and no wise, for we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. 
There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Look in verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it says, James 2.10, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So, yes, there are these seven sins are mentioned in the Bible. But according to Scripture, all sins are deadly. All of them lead to spiritual death. All of them lead you to no righteousness and eternity in the lake of fire. And whether you do whichever one you do, it makes you guilty of doing them all. You have broken the entire law. So if all you do is tell a little white lie, the Catholic Church says it's not deadly, but God's Word says telling a little white lie gives you the damnation of hell. It is deadly, and it's, it means you've also broken the entire law. You haven't um, kept, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. You've broken all of those too. Um, so, really, um, all sins are deadly in the Bible, not just seven. And all of them give you eternal damnation in the lake of fire. And the only way out is by trusting in the blood of Christ alone as atonement for your sins. And you have eternal life. And then if we also look in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verse 19. I'm sorry, verse 18. Romans 7, 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. The Catholics under here, they said, the best way to cure a vice is to build the opposite habit through practice. This good habit is called a virtue. So the Catholics say there are seven sins that lead you to have eternal separation from God. And the way you keep from ever committing those sins is you build an opposite habit through practice. But what the scripture says is that all sins bring death and if you try in your flesh to do something good, you can't do it. The will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And if you keep trying to overcome sin by a good habit, then the result will be, verse 23, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So what scripture says, if you want to be delivered from your sin that you're doing, you don't just build the opposite habit through practice, but you ask for a deliverer, who shall deliver me? And the answer is Jesus Christ our Lord. He's going to bring the deliverance. So if you want to stop sinning, first you have to trust in the blood of Christ to atone for your sins. Then you have eternal life. And then to have a deliverance from sin as a practice, then what you do is you trust in Jesus Christ and the words he's given to you today through the Apostle Paul. Then you walk in the Spirit. It's not that you say, okay, I don't want to sin by committing lust. So what I do then is I'll build the opposite habit through practice. So then what I'm going to do, let's see, the opposite habit of lust is to not desire. Um, they said that lust is an inordinate desire for sexual pleasure. Okay, I'm not going to desire sexual pleasure, so I'm going to do the opposite. And what did they do? The monks, they castrate themselves. They did crazy things to stop this lust coming about. And if you read their accounts... Um, they castrate themselves. They still had lust. Um, they tried different things. They still tried to stop it. The answer is you can't stop it through your flesh. You have to look to Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the one that will bring deliverance through his word and not by some habit that you develop through practice since in your flesh dwells no good thing. Okay, thanks for joining us for the 14th question. Um, go on to question 15 next time. Thank you.